This clip is brought to you by VegasWinners.com. Get expert sports betting advice from some of the best handicappers in the world. Head on over to VegasWinners.com and win yourself some money. Joshua is up <coughs> next, sir, and he says, uh, JR, when working with Vince, what's the do's and the don'ts? Uh, well, you don't sneeze. <laughs> you don't cough. Uh, you pay attention. You have to be prepared with your notes and everything laid out. He's a good businessman. Uh, and you know, we had so many one-on-one -on -one meetings, we got hundreds and hundreds of, them. but it, you got on time prepared for the meeting and, and absolutely seriously, no sneezing, no coughing. Uh, so have Kleenexes with you. If you think you're going to need them. So he's got some little picadillos in that respect, but. Other than that, you know, he's, he's, uh, somewhat predictable actually. So I guess he's got a, he's got a routine that he's established for himself in his meetings. And I'm not going to change his routine, nor am I should have, am I not stupid enough to even try? Why would you try? And why would you think you had the balls or the wherewithal all to even try to get the most powerful man in the world and what you do for a living to change his style. That's just a lack of common sense, right? I mean, that's just stupid ass ignorance, quite frankly. So I never tried to change him in that regard. No coughing, no sneezing. We know he's not a fan of smoking. Would you, would he be kind of a, a germaphobe? Like if you left his office, you had just coughed in your hand and then you grabbed his, his, uh, his door handle on the way out. Would he have a conniption? I don't, I don't, I don't know what he'd do. I mean, he wouldn't like it. it. Yeah. He wouldn't like it quite frankly, but yeah, I work who, who knows what happens when the door shuts, but. <laughs> yeah, he's, I don't know if he's German, but I don't know what that really means and how, how deep that goes. Or yeah, Conrad, it like goes deep a, for somebody. A deep dive. Yeah. Conrad's deep dive. A lot, to unpack, a lot here. to unpack here. My God. Look at those cheeks. Look at those cheeks. Uh, no. uh, so, you know, there's the do's uh, he, and don'ts for Vince. There yeah. There's a few of them. Every, and there's, they've been well documented by other people that have worked with him. All right, J.J. Arwood's back, and he has a question here. He said, did Vince McMahon <laughs> ever get a chance to try some of good old J.R.'s barbecue sauce? And if so, what did he think of it? Well, you know, he did, and he and he was complimentary uh, oh, regarding okay. it. The, the one that really liked it was Linda. Hmm. Was, you know, she's a North Carolina girl, Mrs. McMahon. Uh, she liked it, and I think she's especially fond of our mustard, the jalapeno honey mustard. Uh, so, uh, I know that's Vince's favorite, uh, condiment is mustard. I don't know if it's my mustard or, or somebody else's, but he likes mustard, but, uh, but yeah, they tried it and they were, like you said, very supportive. Good. Rosen coaster says, which talent over the years had the most complex relationship with Vince in your estimation? Oh, uh, well, warrior had one Hogan had one. Austin to a much lesser degree. Uh, I'm trying to think who else, but I say warrior and Hogan had the most, the most prominent relationships of the talent. They're big stars, right? And, uh, there are times where they're the biggest stars in the world. And, uh, and sometimes Vince had his handful and generally it was, it was one of the two C's baby. Cash or creative. I've never got involved in an issue with a talent that didn't involve either cash or creative ever. So if you figure that out early on in your tenure, uh, you should be able to navigate the waters. All right, JR Francis Reyes says. What did you buy for Vince and his family for Christmas? And did you have a favorite present that they got for you? Anything stand out? Uh, no, I don't know that we exchanged Christmas gifts, to be honest with you. Okay. And, and that's not a, a knock or some display of defiance. You know, if you want me to make a defiant story and get all red ass, let me tell you, you know, 
uh, I get good Christmas bonuses. And that's my favorite form because it's called cash, a check more specifically. So, uh, but I don't think we did that. Right. I know one, one year for his birthday, Bruce Pritchard and I went in together and bought him a tie. Reminiscent back to my Mr. Barnett days. We bought him a tie and the tie had one design on it. It was a giant pencil with a huge eraser. We just found it at a store. So Bruce and I went together and got him that. And, and by the way, I've never seen him wear that tie. Oh. But at least we uh, showed our sentiments were in the right place. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe this is real, but we not only got a handicapper, but we got the best ever. How are you so good at handicapping these games? I mean, four and oh, that's quite a streak already. Well, uh, you know, let's talk about every pick I've given this year in the NFL, as an example, 23 and eight, every pick I've given this year, four weeks in the bag, 23 and eight. There's nobody in the country that can match what I do, but I always make sure because anybody, Conrad, could make up anything. They could tell you and blow smoke and tell you, oh, I'm the greatest. But I am independently monitored and documented, so nobody could ever question what I say and go, I don't believe it. I send every pick to an independent monitoring and documentation service that has to get the pick before the game goes off and then publishes it after the game goes off so anybody could see what I gave but this is the best start I've ever had. I've never been this good to start a season. You don't win every week, four weeks in a row, everything you put out. It's been the kind of year I've had. So get on a hot streak because when a guy's on a hot streak like me, you want to ride it. I've always had a talent for picking winners. Never quite as hot as I am right now, but I've always been very good at it. And, and I think it's because I do more homework than anybody else. You know, the average guy or gal watching this podcast they don't have time. They have a career. They have jobs. They might read the newspaper or go online and see something, but they don't have time 80 hours a week to study the games. That's what I do. And I have a crew of guys behind me, my consultants, who every week we get together three times a week and they throw their ideas at me. I throw my ideas at them. And then I pick the final five plays on Saturday and Sunday in college and pro football. So, I mean, I've got a great team behind me too, but it's, we're all doing together hundreds of hours of homework so you don't have to, it's all at vegaswinners.com. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to vegaswinners.com right now. Let's win some money. Up next, Mike Dolman. And he wants to know what is Jim's opinion and what in your opinion is the worst chewing out he has had from Vince. I'm sure there's many, but does one stand out as the biggest? Yeah, I, I tweeted out, uh, the death of Jay Strongbow. And Vince, uh, got extremely irate about that because Strongbow and Vince are uh, long time buddies, very close. And he wanted to be the one to do it. And on my phone rang, I was, I remember where I was, I was at, uh, in Tampa at the, uh, at the gym there I was on Dale Mabry, I think. And I, of course you don't want phone. He says, it's, you know, the name. VKM. Oh shit. And man, he was, he gave me no chance to say, I'm sorry. He was very hurt. And I felt very badly that I did that. I didn't know it was going to have that kind of an impact. So, uh, that was the strongest I ever got, you know, so, but normally, I mean, I got chewed out more on the air than live television than I did in almost any other area, but on that one, he was emotional and angry. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I, I, I made a mistake. It doesn't hurt us folks. when We make a mistake to admit it, understand from it and admit it, learn from it and move on. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.